we're unboxing one of these today. So, I've been wanting to get one of these for quite some time now. Now has come the time. Well, that's why it's here. So uh, I'm very excited. This is a kind of a new journey for me, I guess. I know 3D printers have been around for quite some time, but they haven't really been something that's been on my radar. But now it is because there's a lot of exciting projects that are on the way. And a lot of those projects are going to require one of these. So unboxing with me right here. So obviously, as you can see from the box, I got the A1 Mini. Being my first printer, there's a lot of things that I wanted to try out and uh, sort of test run the initial few products that I'm planning on making. And then as time goes on, there are gonna be a lot more prototyping products that we're gonna be releasing on this channel. There are also some exciting new announcements that I'm gonna be making very soon. So this is kind of like the first step towards that. So you guys are gonna be seeing a lot of that coming through very soon. So for the time being, I'm gonna carry on taking this out. Don't need that, don't need this. This is pretty cool. So you've got the foam part mounted to the cardboard, which is uh, very interesting. Now, I've just seen the base plate, which I'll show you a close up in a second. Okay, let me just turn it around. So you can just about see that. But this right here is the base plate. That is tiny. I feel like my iPhone's bigger than this, almost. But again, being a first printer, it is pretty good. Now I can just lift this straight out. There we go. That is tiny. That is very, very tiny. Literally called a mini, right? So that looks really cool. Now I have some setting up to do. So I'm gonna do that setting up and uh, well, here's some voiceover. So the setup is pretty straightforward. The printer checks and calibrates the X and Y axes to make sure that everything is aligned properly, which is not really that complicated and it takes a few minutes to get that done. Once the setup was done, I decided to do my first couple of prints just to make sure that the calibration worked properly. So I printed out a scraper that I can use for the base plate to remove items once they're printed. Then I decided to print a cover for the exhaust fan on the extruder, which for some reason is exposed, which I find very strange, but I printed it out, stuck it on and it looks really, really cool. Next, I decided to print some tools which I can use for maintenance, for example, applying the oil to the axes before moving on to a more complicated print, which is just a test to make sure that everything is all running smoothly, considering that this is on a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So I decided to print this really cool looking map of downtown Dubai, just to make sure that everything is calibrated properly. Then we moved on to more tools. Here I'm printing out the Allen keys and they are sort of enclosed in this enclosure because they're really hard to use. So we added a little handle so we can get better grip. Then I printed a handle for the main frame, which I think is crucial because it makes it so much easier to carry it around or move it from one place to another. And then a few additional extras such as this poop basket, as it's called, because there is so much filament that gets wasted and that needs to be collected somewhere. So instead of the A1 shooting that poop off, this little basket was created. So it all gets collected and then I can empty into a bigger tray which is what I made next however we came across some issues as you can see from here some of the filament was not printing properly it left gaps everywhere so it looked really strange you can see through it so I made a few adjustments on the software and then the second print came out really well so this tray was essentially a trash tray to collect all the waste that was coming out of the printer then to keep up with the white theme of the actual printer I printed these little cable covers that go all the way around power cable just to add aesthetic one thing that's really disappointing is the quality of the camera that's attached to the a1 so I printed this handle that will attach a GoPro yes I know it's a hero 4 on there this was just for test purposes and this arm is designed to obviously hold a better camera onto there ideally a GoPro and it will record much better time lapses which is currently still in testing format. This video is sponsored by no one. But if you want to support our channel, we've built something that might actually be helpful to you, especially if you are a YouTube content creator. It's called YouTube OS Pro, an all-in-one Notion workspace designed specifically for creators to plan, manage, and grow their YouTube channels. We've designed this for creators who want to manage everything in one place, from video ideas and sponsors, to finances, to goals and milestones. 
Not only that, it comes with a fully detailed built-in help guide, a full 45 minute walkthrough video and a lifetime of updates. So everything you need is all in one place to help you improve and get things going. Or if you already are a YouTube creator, this will help you plan everything and get things organized moving forward. So go ahead and click that link in the description and use code creator20 to get 20% off, but you better be quick because it's only available to the first 100 of you. Thank you for supporting our channel. Let's get back to the video. So I quickly realized that one filament is definitely not going to be enough. And there is so much limitations to what you can do with obviously one color. So I got the AMS light, which is a really cool looking spaceship kind of filament holder, which essentially allows you to have four filaments running. And I think if you've got an A1 mini or any kind of printer, you're going to need at some point to have multiple filaments to do multicolor prints. So this was really cool. And putting it all together was actually really, really simple as well. Then I also got a selection of different colors colors, which was also essential. So I got green, red, blue, black, two whites, orange, and yellow. I think this was a nice selection to have to allow me to do different prints that were needed. And putting it all together next to the printer, it actually looks really, really cool. So where am I getting all these prints from? Well, there is a massive 3D print community online. We have Maker World, which is actually Bamboo Lab's own platform. You also have a website called Printables, and then you have another website called Thangs. And these are the websites I used to actually find really cool models, such as this pen holder, which actually looks really, really cool, but also doubles as a remote control holder. So you can print it in one or two or three compartments. As you know, I'm a Formula One fan, so I obviously I had to print the F1 logo to sit there, but also moving on to more useful things like this cable clip holder. I don't know about you guys, but I have this issue where cables keep falling. So having them here stuck in these little compartments and then they don't fall is really, really useful. But what happens when you can't find what you're looking for? Well, that's where you have to start designing your own things. So I decided to design my own thing here, which is essentially a camera holder for my Sony camera. And it's all fitted together with a bunch of other really cool compartments that I've created for the Alex drawers from Ikea. And these are essentially based on a grid system called the Gridfinity, which essentially looks like ice cube trays, but you can design that to fit inside the Ikea drawers so that they don't slide everywhere. So everything is stuck together in one place. I've even created a DJI mic compartment, but then you also have USB ports, SD cards, batteries, all the things that are essential for my daily kind of use are all there easily accessible rather than rolling around in the drawer every time you open it or close it. I also had an issue with a frame that was mounted to my wall and behind it was a really small metal clip. It wasn't big enough and it was causing the frame to wobble. So I designed my own. However, the first couple of prints weren't really the best. As you can see, it turned into string and that was caused by the actual frame being really thin. I decided to make the frame a little bit thicker and added supports, which are these tree looking things you can see to hold the print up. So the second time it printed perfectly and was actually able to get it on the wall nicely as well. I then designed a few additional custom things like this hard drive holder with all the cables so that they are all in one place and they look pretty cool as well and neat on the desk and then a custom stand for my phone. Now this was an interesting one and it took a few iterations to get this right. So you'll see this groove down the middle of it and that is designed to hold the magnet that I got on the back of my phone. And I used a magnet to attach to my car but this magnet would not fit on an off the shelf stand so I had to design my own one, create that gap in the middle, create the gap at the bottom as well so I can swipe up while it's sitting there. I also created a small stand for my Logitech MX Creative Console and I will do a more in-depth video on this separately but the thing with this one is that the key pad comes with its own stand. However, the dial pad does not, hence the reason why I designed one that kind of matches. I also designed a little stand to fit the iPad and MacBook on one stand as well, because there isn't one out there that actually holds both. And you can see it also holds the case with it as well. And then one of the most annoying things I had was my Wi-Fi router, which does not come with its stand. It's got these little weird flimsy things on the side. So I designed my own to make it a lot more firm, a lot more stable, and even look a lot better as well. And by the way, if you want any of these models that I've shown you so far or any future ones that I'll be creating, there is a link in the description where you can download them from for free. So that's my experience with the A1 Mini. And honestly, for a first printer, it's been absolutely brilliant. Yes, there's been a few issues here and there which I have had to calibrate and make sure that I understand what I'm doing, but that's just part of the learning process. So if you're in the market for getting a first printer, this is definitely something that I would recommend, although this is not a sponsored video. But yes, the A1 Mini is definitely something that I would recommend. We are in the holiday season at the moment. We've got Black Friday coming up. You have Christmas coming up. I'm sure if you go into the Bamboo Labs website, you're going to see plenty of deals going on, not only with the printer itself, but also with the AMS light and I'm sure the filaments are going to be on special offer as well. So yeah, I was on the fence for a while 
about getting a 3D printer, but uh, I'm glad we made this choice. And I'm glad that we are now in the process of actually making full use of it with, as I've mentioned, loads of things that are coming up with our projects. Uh, excited to share those with you in the coming weeks and months ahead. What I'm gonna do in my next video is go through the whole setup, okay? So where I've located the printer, how everything around it is set up for ease, and show you what I actually use the printer for on a regular basis. All right, guys, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. And if you wanna to continue to support our channel, make sure you hit that link in the description and get yourself the YouTube OS Pro and plan your YouTube videos the way you should be. All right, take it easy and I will see you guys in the next video.